When I bought my house a little over a year ago, I was pretty bummed out to see that it came with a generic bare bones garage door opener. Not only because I knew that one, having a smart garage door opener was important to me, but secondly, and probably more important, smart garage door openers are pretty expensive. So I knew it was gonna cost hundreds of dollars to replace it, and I didn't wanna waste a garage door opener that already did work. But luckily, after a pretty quick search on Amazon, I found the perfect solution. This is the MyQ Chamberlain Smart Garage Door Control. And this is a bestseller with almost 100,000 reviews and 4.4 out of 5 stars. This little device is actually compatible with all of the major garage door opener brands, just as long as yours is manufactured after 1993 and has the standard safety sensors, it will be compatible. Once you get it in the box, you're going to find the hub itself, the door sensor, a power cord, and some of the installation hardware. Let me show you how to install it. Installation on this device is actually very simple. If you don't have a good Wi-Fi connection in the garage, this device likely just won't work well, and what they recommend is to have the router within 50 feet of the garage. Once you've confirmed that, the first thing you want to do is go into your App Store or Google Play Store and download the MyQ app. You do need to have an account in order to use this app, so you can put in your own information or use one of the simple sign-in options with Amazon, Apple, or Google. Once you're signed into the app, this will be what you see. This is your dashboard on the app, and all that you want to do is add the device firstly. It won't be this garage door opener option, it'll be further down in here, right here where it says Smart Garage Hub. From here, you're gonna to wanna to choose the device, which in our case is right here at the top, the Smart Garage Control. And it actually gives you a little checklist of everything that you're gonna need for the install, which I find very handy. A lot of smart devices that I've installed do not have very good instructions. I noticed that this MyQ one definitely has very easy to follow instructions. At this point, the app is going to ask you to plug in your hub, which I've done so, and I put it here on the desk just for demonstration purposes, so it's a little easier for you to see. Once you have it plugged in, you will see a blue flashing light here at the top. That means that it's in pairing mode, so it's ready to go. I'm gonna put this here and then add the sensor right here because we'll need that here in just another moment. So following the app instructions, we've got it powered up, it's blinking blue. We'll hit next. And just like that, the device was found via Bluetooth. We just press on it there and it'll connect to it automatically. From here, you're gonna insert your Wi-Fi information. So once you type in the Wi-Fi password, it'll connect it to the hub. Now that the hub is connected to Wi-Fi, the next step is to pair the sensor to the hub. So when the device is brand new, it will have a little plastic tab in this slot right here that disconnects the batteries while it's in shipping mode. So you will wanna pull that out. Mine doesn't have it because I have already used it before. It'll have you test the door sensor as well. That's what this button is for. You just wanna make sure that when you press it, it illuminates red. You do have to press the button as well in the pairing process. Just like that, your hub is paired to your sensor. Now the next step is you're going to be installing your sensor onto your actual physical garage door. This sensor is gonna be what detects whether or not your garage door is open at any given time. And with the instructions, it'll tell you you have to put the sensor here on the top left or on the top right of your garage door. Now, to be honest with you, when I was installing this on my house originally, I did not realize that that was the recommendation. I actually ended up putting mine right in the middle of the garage door. But luckily it did not have any impact and it still worked great. You can pretty much put this wherever you'd like to, but they recommend in the top corner. You just want to make sure you clean off the panel that you're putting it on and then use the included Velcro uh, to install it onto the door. You do also have the option to mount your sensor with screws if you'd like to. I'm not sure really why anyone would want to do that, but that is an option. If you'd rather not use adhesive, you can. Another thing to be mindful of is just making sure that your sensor is mounted properly with the top of it towards the ceiling and the bottom of it pacing towards the ground. You'll notice right here it says top. Again, just make sure that that is facing upwards just so that it can detect properly whether or not your door is open. And the next step is to pair the hub to the motor of your garage door opener. From here, you just want to climb up onto a ladder, check the make and model of your garage door opener, and it'll actually ask you for that here, mine is Chamberlain, and next it'll ask you to locate your pairing button and ask you what type of button it is. So once you've found it, you can tell them what type of button you have, and this will be the way that it detects and knows what signal to send out in order to control your door. Now once your sensor is installed and your hub is connected to your garage door motor, the next step is going to be installing the hub onto the wall in your garage. The reason that you want this on your wall is because you do have buttons here on the hub that you can use to actually control your garage door and open or close it. 
This hub does allow you to connect up to two doors. If you buy a separate sensor, you can control a second door as well. Outside of that, there is also a safety feature that's built into this hub, which is this big LED light right in the middle of it. So when you're remotely closing your garage door, it actually illuminates this light and makes a very loud beeping sound. Basically just to act as a warning in case there's anyone or anything in the way of the garage door when you're trying to close it. Now this does not illuminate or make a sound when you're opening the door, just when you're closing it. As far as mounting the hub, their recommendations are to put it six feet up on a wall and at least four feet away from any metal objects, just to make sure there's no interference when trying to control your garage door. And it has a mounting base here on the back that's removable. So you'll want to install this on the wall first by screwing it in with drywall anchors and screws. And then once this is mounted on your wall, you take your hub and you just screw it right onto it like this. That secures it to the wall and also makes sure that it's detachable if you need to take it down for whatever reason you can. So if you do everything to the book on the instructions, that'll be how you want to mount and install your hub. Now, that being said, I personally did not mount this hub on the wall. What I ended up doing is I actually just put it right on top of my water softener, which is right by the door that goes into the house. So it still allows you to press the buttons to control it if you need to. It still illuminates that light onto the ceiling of the garage and onto the wall. So you can definitely easily tell when it's closing by the sound and by the light illuminating. But it just gave me a little bit more leniency as far as if I ever needed to unplug it or move it, it wasn't permanently installed. So at least for me personally, I don't think it's necessary to install this on the wall if you don't want to, but it is an option and it's what they recommend to do. So as you can tell, I actually did the install on both of these different than what they recommended. I put my sensor in the middle of the garage door instead of the top corners, and I ended up not installing the hub on the wall at all. I've never had any issues in controlling this device, even with it not mounted to the book on the instructions, it still worked perfectly. And now that it's installed, it's gonna be very easy for you to control your garage door opener directly from your phone. As soon as you open up the MyQ app, it gives you a status on the door, letting you know whether or not it's open or closed. And to control it, it's as simple as pressing the big circular button right in the middle of the app. And again, this is a Wi-Fi enabled device, so you do not have to be nearby or within Bluetooth range anymore. This is something that you can control from wherever you have a signal. Out of state, out of country, does not make a difference. As long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can absolutely can control this device from wherever you are. Now in the settings of the app, when you tap on the gear icon, it will give you some other options to control the device. The main one that I've used would be setting it on a schedule. This is a great and simple way to assure that your garage door is closed whenever you want it to be. Mainly this is used for people that wanted to have the garage door close automatically at night. Now at the bottom of the app, there's also another tab called users. This is where you can go to add different people that'll be able to control the device outside of yourself. And there are two different types of users that you can add. The first one would be a co-owner. That just means that they will have full access to control the door in the same way that you do. The second option is called family and friend. Now this one's even cooler because it gives you the ability to give people access to your garage door, but with limitations that you can set. There's three different levels of restrictions you can add to it. The top one is called always, meaning that they can control the door whenever they want to. The second one is temporary. This gives you the ability to let someone control your door for a certain amount of time. So if you go out of town and you have someone that's watching your house for a certain amount of time, you can set it to allow them to control the door during that time, and then once it ends, they will no longer have access. The last one would be recurring access. This is perfect for something like a babysitter or a dog sitter. This allows you to give them access on certain days, and if you'd like to, at certain times of day, just to make sure that they can only get in when you want them to or when you're scheduled to have them come. The third tab at the bottom of the app is a history tab. So this just gives you a very detailed way to look into who's controlling your door, what time it's happening, when it opens or closes, or really any sort of timekeeping things like that that you might want to keep track of. You have a detailed record of it here in the app in the history tab. And the last tab on the bottom of the app called Discover, it does give you the ability to basically see free advertisements for all of the other MyQ products. But if you actually go to the next tab within the Discover tab called Partners, this will be where you can actually connect your garage door opener to different third-party services as well. The main one at the very top is Amazon Key. This actually gives you the ability to allow Amazon drivers to open your garage, to put your packages inside the garage, and then close it for you just for an extra level of security to protect from porch pirates. You also have a similar type of service from Walmart. 
Otherwise, you can also add these to certain types of cars, depending on what manufacturer you have. Tesla, Mitsubishi, and Volkswagen are some of them. And this allows you to control your garage through the dashboard on your car. There are a few other connections you can do to security systems and automations, but those are pretty much all of the main features and ways to control your smart garage door opener with this device. Okay, so what's the downside to this product? To be honest, there isn't much downside. It's very cheap, it's very easy to use, and it works very well. But really, the one thing that I've run into that I definitely think is a downside of this product is that there's basically no integration with any external services. So, for example, you cannot connect this to a smart voice assistant. That's a really unfortunate aspect of this device because it would be wonderful to be able to add this to those types of third-party services like Alexa, HomeKit or Google Home. Having integration with those services would make this way better because it would allow you to control your garage door through automations in addition to just scheduling it or manually pressing a button. And it would give you the ability to open and close your garage door with your voice assistant, which is definitely something that would be nice to have. And there you have it. Let me know what you think about this product in the comments below. And if you found this video useful in any way, please consider setting your garage door opener to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. And if you did enjoy this video, I think you'll enjoy this one too. Thank you for watching.